That's fine. But uh, Robin, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's a pleasure to speak to you, and I'm I'm glad that you made some time out of your day uh, to come on and talk all things music. Uh, we will talk about everything for yourself, but before we get started, how are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just uh, busy as always, but uh, it's better to be busy than I suppose the other way around. <laughs> but uh, we're going to talk about all. Th- we're going to talk about all things music for yourself, but what I like to do with each of the guests is just go back to the very beginning. So, where are you originally from? So, I'm from just outside Glasgow in Airdrie. Right, okay. I've only ever, uh, whenever Sorry. I say that, like on the stage, whenever I say it on the stage, I only, I've only ever had one cheer, which is better than no <laughs> cheers, but... <laughs> Well, one cheer is better than lots of booze. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and um, when you were very young, were you into music from a very young age? Uh, yeah, so my brother, he was doing um, guitar lessons and then he moved on to piano lessons. Uh, and that's kind of how I got into music. I started doing keyboard lessons with right. the same... A uh, teacher that he done his guitar and uh, keyboard, uh, piano with, and after I seen him going to all the lessons, I just wanted to get into music, yeah. and that's and was there, music. Was there music playing in your house, like just listening to music? Not really, no. No, it was so, no. No, I was going to ask, what was there an age then that you? that you yourself got into music with like bands or artists that you'd started discovering for yourself? Whenever I really got into music was um, whenever I got into country music. And that was yeah. whenever I was, I think I was 14 or something. And I was yeah. in, the, in the back of my best friend's dad's car and he had Luke Combs playing on the radio. So I just right. started listening to Luke Combs and um, Ashley McBride and all the big country stars. Yeah. Obviously Dolly Parton as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, give us a wee laugh then. What was, do you remember what, what was the first album that you ever bought? Album that I bought? Yeah. Do you remember the first never album? Never bought or, an album. <laughs> you never bought an album? Or what was the first songs of no. that? Are you, are you just streaming? I couldn't tell you. Like off of, whenever I can remember, um, the very first song that I listened to of Luke Combs was When It Rains at Porsche. Um, But I've never ever bought an album, like actual physical album or anything, no. Wow. (laughs) And um, what what about the first concert that you ever attended? Uh, I think it may have been Little Mix. Little right. Mix or One Direction. So would that have One been at, Would that have been Glasgow at the Hydro, probably? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I can so, just remember being like absolutely starstruck whenever they came on. Yeah. It was yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a strange thing like uh, going to a concert, even nowadays for myself, you go to a concert, and especially if you're quite close to the stage as well, that you're seeing this person that, you know, whether it, you know, back in the day it would have been posters on your wall or that, but you're seeing this person that you've watched a million times, or probably like on YouTube or something like that, and they're right in front of you and, and they look exactly what you expect them to look like, and they sound exactly as, as good, and it's it's an amazing thing, and it's one of those things you, you can't um, that feeling of going to a live concert. You can't explain that to someone. They've got to actually just yeah. go, and then obviously, if it's a big concert and they start playing the songs, and you've got twenty thousand people all singing the same song and doing the same thing at the same time, it, it's amazing. But it, it's hard to explain to someone that's that's never been to a concert. Uh, because you can sit and listen to it with the best headphones on, but it's not the same as actually attending an actual concert. 
Yeah, I think it's amazing how music can bring like people together, and everyone's everyone's in the same room as you for the exact same reason. It's just because you love that music, and yeah, yeah, I just think it's amazing how music can bring all these people together. Yeah, I mean, if you've got, you know, everybody's got problems in their life and things going on, but just for that two hours of that evening, you can forget about everything, just enjoy yourself. Uh, yeah. It's pretty. Pretty cool. So your brother was getting um, piano lessons, guitar, that's kind of how you got into it. What is your main instrument that you play? Um, so my main instrument like right now is guitar. Um, mm -hmm. I've not played the keyboard like on stage or anything because I just, it's kind of a boring instrument, like you can't walk around or anything with it. Yeah. With the guitar, you can walk about and everything. Um, but I'm going to start getting the keyboard out sometime soon. And what oh, about... <laughs> what about um, singing? Did singing come, come later on for you? Yeah, so I was about five whenever I started keyboard lessons. Um, but I was about 11 whenever I started singing lessons and I walked in and I could not hold a tune. Um, my singing teacher worked wonders on me. <laughs> yep. um, and yeah, I've, just, I've been going to the exact same singing teacher from from when I was 11 to now. So, so you, you're obviously singing, you're playing the guitar. Is, is there one that you're more comfortable doing? Singing. Singing. Right. Definitely singing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like, I feel more free whenever I've not got the guitar to stand behind. Like a mm -hmm. lot of people have just said, whenever I'm doing songs without my guitar, I feel that like I look more, I don't know, I, look, I just look more comfortable. I, I come out my shell more because I can run about the yeah. stage. Yeah, I mean, I was watching some of the videos that are on, on YouTube and the, the ones that I've seen you were just singing, you know, you had the rest of the band playing and um, yeah. you look, you know, you look very comfortable on stage. You, it wasn't that thing. There's some people, when you take the guitar off them, they don't know what to do with their hands. It's It looks very awkward, but you looked very comfortable with just the microphone, which is, is hard for some people. Yeah. Last year it was... I think you might have watched the Buckle and Boots video, I don't know. But last year, whenever I went down, I was doing like this jam in the barn and mm -hmm. it was the house band that was playing and I had to go on and sing without my guitar and I'd never done that before. Well, I'd done it whenever I was just starting out, but yeah. um, I hadn't done it like recently and... I'd never been that nervous since the very first time that I'd performed. But I went on and I'd done it and it was actually okay. And now I prefer kind of putting the guitar down for a couple of songs. And I mean, it's all, it's all a learning experience. And it's, I suppose it's like anything. The more you do it, the, mo the better you become at it, the more comfortable you become. And it's the same with, um, you're obviously the singer, you're the front person, so you're having to to also communicate with the audience. And there's a lot of people yeah. I know, a lot of people I know that, that play and they're, they're very good musicians and, and they're good singers, but they feel really, really awkward in between the songs. You know, they can't speak mm -hmm. to the audience. But then on the flip side, I know people that are absolutely amazing at communicating with the audience <laughs> and they're not so great on the instrument themselves, but what they lack yeah. ability, they, they definitely make up for in confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like, a, I'm like a totally different person on stage. Um, yeah. Whenever I'm off stage, like you can ask anyone, I hardly talk. Um, but on stage, I can I can talk for hours. If you give me a mic and my red hat, then I can be on that stage talking for hours. I think I think that's quite normal. Like you know, you've seen I've seen a lot of interviews with different musicians, all different backgrounds, it might be rock music, it might be country, and a lot of them it's, you know, it's them on stage, but it's like a, a caricature of themselves, it's it's yeah. them plus a hundred, and, and when they come off stage, it's just like what you said, they're actually 
quite shy or quiet and you know quite happy just to sort of be by themselves but put them in front of <laughs> it's 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 a, a weird thing but it seems to be quite a common thing as well mm-hmm. that is quite common um but I think you just need to, whenever you're on the stage you need to just put on a show and then whenever you come off it's like a big weight's lifted off your shoulders and like you know that you've been up you've done your best and Another thing I suppose. Come down and relax. Yeah, I mean, I suppose at the end of the day, you're on stage because you're enjoying it. You know, it's something that you, that yeah. you love to do. And there's obviously hurdles to get over, but the more you do it, the easier that becomes. And, you know, obviously, you know, I, see, I was watching the videos today, you know, you looked perfectly comfortable on stage. So whatever you're doing is working. So, you, so keep doing it, I suppose. But, um, See, when it comes to songwriting, how do you go about songwriting? So do, you, do you just sit with your guitar and like, does the music come first and the lyrics come last? Is that how you work? It just depends. So if I've got, if I've heard like a chord sequence I'll, that I like, I'll jot it down on my notes. Or if I've yeah. got a melody that I like, I'll voice note it into my phone, or if I've got a line of something that I've heard in a movie, or someone just saying to me, I'll jot it down in my notes, and whatever I like, I'll start off with. Just It all just depends on the day. Yeah, it is amazing. <laughs> you can get just a little spark of, as you say, it might be a line in a, in a movie, or it might be that you, you jump in the car and you switch the radio on and there's a song playing at just a certain moment that you go, mm-hmm. I like that. that. It triggers something in your mind that makes you want to write a song. And the song that you write, it, it might not sound anything like the song that in, inspired you to write it in the first place. That's the amazing yeah. thing about music as well. But uh, What I've learned from... What I've learned from like other songwriters is you can always like take a melody or whatever and change yep. it up, make it your own and have it sound nothing like what the song you're basing it off of. Yeah. It's kind of a cheat but it's a good way to go about it. <laughs> You've basically described me in the, <laughs> in the, in the last 30 yeah. years. Everything I write is it's basically stolen from somewhere and, and the trick is to just change it enough that you don't get a copyright issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, so are, are you completely like a solo artist or do you have like a, a backing band that, that performs with you? No, I'm completely, so, well, I'm completely solo, but I've got the band that I've been using, I've been using for about a year. So, um, they are good. They've they've helped me out a lot. And yeah. So how did you how did you kind of cross paths with that band then? So, um, my drummer used to. He's a maths teacher, and he used to. I was never good in at maths, so I had to get a maths chair. Um, and then found out obviously drums and he produces my singles as well and everything that's out on Spotify and my bass player knows my drummer and I met my guitarist through just old mics and my fiddle player um, my dad works with her auntie and it's just like come on into our rehearsing room and learn my songs <laughs> so if you see if you if you write a song, if you come up with a song idea, do you kind of come up with the skeleton of the song, like the verse, verse, chorus, bridge section? Would you take it to the band and would the band then build it from there to kind of make the completed song? Is that how you go about doing this doing the songwriting process? Yes, yeah, so I'll basically I'll write write everything whether it's just myself or if it's co-writes or if it's co-writes within 
the rest of the, the guys. Um, and then I'll have ideas of how I want the song to go and I'll take them in. But if they've got any ideas, then I'm free for ideas. Yeah, yeah that, that's cool. And um, when you, I know that you've got a few singles that are out on, like I, I was looking on iTunes as well. And when you're going in to record them, what is your method for recording? Do you do you perform it live with everybody mic'd up or do you just kind of layer it? So do you record the guitars and then do you add the bass and do you just kind of do it that way? Yeah, so we'll always do, I'll always just play a clip track and we'll do my guitar yep. and my vocals first and then they'll just come in and build their bits around my bits. Yeah. Um, and and it, it works. I mean, there's not, there's not a, right, there's not a right or a wrong way. Everybody does it different, and sometimes it maybe depends on the the style of music. Some methods are better, others, but um, there's not a right or a wrong way. But obviously, having wrote songs and recorded them, and obviously you do a lot of gigging and performing. See if you had to pick just one of them, which one would you pick to do for the rest of your life? What, recording or performing? Yeah. Performing. Performing. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a funny question because there's you get different answers. Um, some people, it's, they would just, if they could, if they had, if they, the record company allowed them to, to give them an income that they could just write and record all day, they would do it. And other people, it's, it's all about performing. I mean, obviously, the ideal thing is that you do both. You know, you you write, record songs, and then you get to go and perform them, and hopefully, people enjoy those songs as well. But um, obviously, as I said, I was looking um, on iTunes. So you've got um, "Like a Bullet," which was June twenty twenty two, "When the Sun Sets," which was May twenty twenty three, and uh, Luke Jackson, which was October twenty twenty three. So what is your plans? We're halfway through 2024, so what is your plans for the rest of the year? What have you got planned? So I'm going to release either another one single or maybe another two, it just depends. Um, but I'm going to, I've got a whole lot of writing sessions booked in um, with people down in England. And mm-hmm. I'm hoping to get some up in Scotland as well. I've got some Zoom writing sessions for people over in America and just gigging away. Gigging, gigging away, keeping out of trouble. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So, uh, Robin, we've obviously been talking a lot, a lot of music chat for any musicians that are watching, but before we, we end the podcast, I'll, I'll ask you a few fun questions. Uh, so we'll end on some fun for you. So, Imagine that you could go back in time and that you could attend, anywhere in the world, you could attend any concert, big or small. What's the one concert that you wish that you could have actually attended? Queen. And it was in... What was the big concert that Queen did? Live Aid. Live Aid, yeah. Yeah. That's a very, uh, that's a very popular... Uh, answer to that question Queen Live Aid and I think the other one was Woodstock for uh, anybody that's that's older but that that would have been cool I mean you, you see the, the footage on stage it's just uh, assuming you're maybe near the front I don't <laughs> if you were at the very back you probably couldn't see anything but uh, that would have been <laughs> so another question then for you as you know yourself, there's there's millions and millions of great songs being written across the years by different art, artists. Mm-hmm. What's the one song that you wish you could have been in the recording studio to witness it being recorded? Oh, um, that's actually a good question, but a hard question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's hard to pick just one. I know. 
I don't know why I, I'm in such a queen mood today, but I would love to have heard Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. It's Get weird. Recorded. You know, it's, a, it's like, obviously a very unique song. Yeah. Uh, so I always wonder, I always wonder, it's such a great song. Would it have been great to watch them recording it? Because they, they obviously recorded it in bits and it probably made absolutely no sense at the time when they were recording it. But then you hear the finished product and it blows your mind. You think that's absolutely amazing. But um, it, it, it's weird. That, as you say, you could probably pick a hundred songs and, and you could pick another hundred. There's so many good songs out there. Um, I think some of the old songs would have been cool because the, because the recording technology was so limited, they all had to do it live in the studio. It would have been pretty cool, like all your old Johnny Cash and everything, where they're just yeah. standing in front of the microphone and then the guitar player come, steps forward to do his guitar solo and hopefully you can hear everything. It's It'd be interesting to see. There's so many good songs out there. And, uh, and then the last question for you, so Mount Rushmore, who is the four either bands or solo performers, who's the four for yourself that you are your favourite that you would just put at the top of the pile? Uh, are you a big country fan? No. Kinda. I like Johnny Cash. Okay. So kinda like the older country. Yeah, uh, I, I'm a big rocker, but unfortunately, um, my girlfriend was <laughs> was uh, sitting a few months ago, and there was something by Shania Twain came on the TV, and she was shocked that I knew all the words to it. And but I was like, the reason I know this though is that back back in the nineties, when I worked in a music shop, you were only allowed to play, um, obviously to help advertise the albums, you're only allowed to play any of the top five albums that were in the charts and the number one album at the time was Come On Over by Shania Twain. <laughs> so hence the reason that I know all the songs because I had to listen to it every day for eight hours uh, for six months. And, uh, so uh, obviously, whether I like it or not, I know a lot of Shania, Shania Twain. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you might not know any of these people, but my top, was it four? Yeah. Four. So it would be Lainey Wilson. Okay. Um, Ashley McBride. Yep. Um, Luke Holmes. Okay. And it's hard. <laughs> and you might change your mind tomorrow. I know. Um, let's go with Old Dominion. There you go. Robin, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. And uh, I look forward to obviously any music you've got coming out. If anybody is wanting to find out about gigs, about music, you've got your website. They can go and visit it. You're on social media. So anybody can check out anything that you've got coming up in the future but I do wish you all the luck and uh, it was really good to, oh, to meet you speak to you and uh, until next time thank until you time. thank you very much for having me thank you